In this video, we are turning our attention to the forecasting, uh, forecasting of capital expenditure as well as capital structure, uh, more on capital expenditure, so capex than capital structure, and we'll talk a little bit at the end about the uses of scenario analysis, but only in a very, uh, in a very limited uh, way. Right, um, so capital expenditure is all to do with property, plant and equipment, as well as, so that's the end sign, intangible assets. And, you know, uh, these lines in the balance sheet um, are also connected to, of course, other elements of the financial statements. Uh, the income statement, most notably via depreciation and amortization, as well as the cash flow statement where you'll find info about capital expenditure, about the actual amount of money spent on um, new acquisitions. So um, PPE and intangible assets, you could say that they increase uh, due to money being spent on them, so capex and information about that historically, as well as forecasts concerning capex will impact not just the balance sheet, but the cash flow statement, sorry, cash flow statement as well. And uh, at the same time, of course, um, property, plant and equipment, as well as intangibles fall. Uh, they may fall due to disposals, um, of, um, which will once again be picked up uh, in the cash flow statement. Uh, but uh, the primary reason why they consistently fall in value is due to uh, depreciation, which I typically write down as DEP uh, apostrophe N, or amortization, depending on whether we're talking about tangible or intangible assets. And of course, info about that will make its way into the income statement. And of course, it's also an adjusting factor in the cash flow statement, uh, cash from operations under the indirect method. Right, um, right. Now, let, let's, let's talk about these um, capex and depreciation or amortization sort of separately, starting with with capex or capital expenditure. Um, this actually comes in, in two forms. Um, we've got our maintenance capex. So that's going to be uh, the capital expenditure, which is necessary to uh, simply sustain our uh, current business at its existing current level. And, um, you know, the, the way in which we, because, you know, let's not lose of a sight, sight of the fact that we're talking about how to forecast this element, CapEx in general, but also now more specifically this element of capital expenditure. So this is often by analysts estimated or forecast um, using historical levels of uh, historical, sorry, depreciation slash amortization, because although that is not necessarily what depreciation or amortization is supposed to do, many analysts, you know, kind of think about it as a way of showing or as a way of, 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 of estimating the depletion of a company's assets, which happens periodically. Although, you know, you have to remember that actual financial reporting depreciation or amortization is not, to, is not really representative of how an asset ages as an approximation. It's often used that way, and that's perfectly fine. Although, you know, historical depreciation and amortization being some proxy for the depletion of assets may lead us to conclude, well, this is how much the company should be spending on, on the maintenance of these assets. But remember, historical uh, depreciation and amortization, that's based on historical prices or costs of acquiring certain assets. If you were to um, if you were to uh, maintain them uh, and, and you know keep, keep them up, you'd have to have an adjustment for inflation as well uh, as things wear out. Uh, I need to replace them, then, you know, um, it costs, you have to spend money uh, using current prices, so adjusted for inflation. Right, um, CapEx is not just 
about maintenance, it's also uh, maintaining the status quo, it's also about growth, capex. Um, right, so these are the sort of two, um, two forms of capital expenditure, and this is the spending necessary not to sustain, but to ex, um, expand, sorry, expand uh, the business, make it bigger, make it grow. And uh, making estimates of this um, is going to be more sort of discretionary, uh, more difficult for sure. Um, estimates uh, will be typically related to management's plans for expansion, if, if, if management are vocal with their plans to expand the business, grow the business, then the analysts, you know, on a discretionary basis can, um, can try and estimate the amount of uh, capital expenditure necessary to achieve that. Right, uh, so that's CapEx. Let's now have a look at depreciation, stroke, amortization as the second component of, um, of the sort of, of the, of the equation and the, the dynamic uh, within PPE and intangible assets, depreciation slash amortization forecasts. Um, right, um, forecasts for these will typically be based on, uh, you know, balance sheet uh, balance sheet amounts um, for PPE and intangible assets plus an estimate of capex which kind of gives you an idea of how uh, how those balances grow um, and you also need an estimate for useful lives for the for the assets which will give you an indication of the amount the period over which to sp spread uh, or allocate the relevant values now um, Estimating useful lives, often they'll be given in the financial statements. One way to, to do a sort of rough and dirty approximation um, will be to go into the notes to the financial statements, take a look at the gross value of assets, um, property, plant and equipment, intangible assets, they should be presented at the top of a big table, reconciling the movements of uh, PPE and intangible assets respectively. You should have gross assets at the end of the period or the beginning of the period, and uh, that's assets that, uh, stated at their original cost of purchase uh, without the adjustment for accumulated depreciation, and divide that by your annual uh, depreciation or, or amortization. That's not divided by, that's just slash, as in or amortization expense. And that should give you uh, an idea of the useful life uh, of the asset, uh, assuming a linear straight line depreciation. Now, um, part of the heading for this was also about estimating capital structure. Right, there isn't that much we're going to say here, forecasts of the company's, a company's capital structure. Right. Um, as our typical or most common forecast objectives, uh, sorry, forecast objects, not objectives, the things that we will focus our forecasting on, we'll, we're, we're going to have leverage ratios most of the time. So things like, uh, you know, e.g. debt to equity ratios or debt to capital or, you know, debt to EBITDA. That's typically what you want to focus on as opposed to the actual value for debt or indeed equity. Um, or that's typically the way analysts work. Um, you know, they, they have to consider, or analysts, us, we have to consider uh, the uh, historical practice. I mean, what, what, uh, what the company has been doing in the past in terms of its capital structure, but also, uh, you know, the management's uh, stated financial strategy. Uh, strategy... Um, Often management will have 
announced some kind of capital uh, target structure. So target capital structure. Sometimes we'll know that a company is subject to covenants which relate to the proportion of debt and equity or debt to other metrics and we know the company should do what it can to maintain and stay within certain limits or confines as uh, dictated by those uh, debt covenants uh, being sort of prescriptions for what a company should do and shouldn't do when it takes on debt. And on top of this, we'll also be able to probably forecast certain capital requirements or the, you know, the requirement for additional capital, which will result, so resulting from our previous CapEx forecasts. Because the reason why a company often needs to raise additional funding is because it's expanding um, in terms of its uh, fixed assets. It's investing in property, plant and equipment, in tangible assets, and for that, you know, the capital, the capex forecast that we did before, especially the expansion forecasts, will come in very handy. Um, right. The very final topic here that I'm just throwing in is scenario analysis. Um, at the very end of this uh, learning module, of this reading, uh, the curriculum has a section which is pretty much uh, just a, one big example, because uh, it's very difficult to talk about scenario analysis and say something meaningful. They show an example of it. Um, if you have the time, have a look at it. But it's, you know, the, the problem is you can't test a comprehensive example in an ABC style format. So unlikely that you'll be in any way tested on it. But just be aware that scenario analysis is always uh, extremely favored by CFA Institute, as indeed it should be, because it allows us to, instead of you know building forecasts as single point estimates, single values, it gives us the opportunity or possibility, possibility to incorporate uh, different outcomes, different values for the different variables under specific scenarios, and that makes for a more comprehensive and definitely better, uh, better, better forecast.